wanting for God's mercy and his grace over my life. And I feel privileged to share his word with you this morning. Our scripture this morning is from Jeremiah, the first chapter. Our focus verse is verse 8, but I'm going to read from um, verse 4 to seven to 19. Sorry. Um, and the word goes as follows. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you. A prophet to the nations. Then said I, Our Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words into your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, and to build and to plant. Therefore prepare yourself and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. This is the word of the Lord. And we give thanks to God. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you. This conversation and instruction from God to Jeremiah is just so tremendously boss to me. I know that word didn't come out right. I mean like boss, like it gave me goosebumps. To understand the profoundness of this text relating to the calling of Jeremiah, uh, we do need to get some context. There's nothing typical about Jeremiah's calling besides the fact that God always seemed to call the most unlikely individual in the most challenging situations to fulfill his purpose. Jeremiah was 21 years old, seemingly introverted and sensitive, with little to no confidence. He was called the weeping prophet, and that's because he had a very tender nature. And so while his father was a priest, God called him specifically to be a prophet. Jeremiah grew up and was called during a period in the time of Judah where God seems to have just had enough of the rebellion and the disobedience of the Israelites. In 2 Kings 21, it actually explains the total chaos and anarchy during this period. And if you read into the second chapter of Jeremiah, God states his case against Israel. As I was reading it, I could almost hear the heartache and the heartbreak in God's voice when he speaks of the way his people have turned against him and are following idols and making petition to foreign gods, gods who can do nothing for them. And so this is now a nation who have forgotten about God. This was a very, very dark period in the history of the Israelites. And so imagine this timid young man who has already made his in, um, inadequacies known to God, has to go and bring a very difficult, uncomfortable message and warning to a nation on the brink of destruction. But because God is bountiful in his mercy and his love, he also instructs Jeremiah to bring a message of hope to his beloved Israel, whom he so badly wants to call back to him. No one would be exempt from this message, from this prophecy. Not the kings of Judah, not its princes, not even its priests, and not any one of the people of the land. 
In fact, God warns Jeremiah that yes, all of these people are going to come up against you. So God says to Jeremiah, let me tell you, Jeremiah, you see, I have this day, I've set you over the kingdoms. In other words, God is telling him, I've established and I have positioned you in a position of power over these kingdoms. Because my assignment to you is to root out and to pull down all the evils, the culture, the traditions, the idol worshipping that the Israelites have become accustomed to among the nations in which they have chosen to settle. Jeremiah was called to destroy and throw down everything that has separated them from God. And the beautiful message of hope that God has given him is to build up and to plant again for a new day, a new beginning, a new journey with God. As Jeremiah 31 verse 1 puts it, he says, uh, God says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It's a mammoth task. And just like Jeremiah, the enormity of the assignment that God places before us can be very intimidating. And it causes us to shy away into the shadows, most of us. Most people actually hope that someone else will stand in for them and do what they themselves have been called to do because they feel inadequate or not ready for the assignment which God has placed on their hearts. We read in the passage that Jeremiah said he couldn't speak and plus he was young. But God made him understand that it had nothing to do with his maturity or lack thereof. It had nothing to do with his speech or speech impediments. It had nothing to do with his timidity. But it had everything to do with the fact that God chose him and God set him apart to make this difference in the lives of the people called by God. You see, we each have an assignment specific to us, but also there's a general assignment on all of us. God uses us, the unlikely, the unqualified. And I want to make something clear that I'm not talking about educational status because you can have the highest education and you can have, you know, be of high status, but you can still feel hopelessly inadequate to take up your assignment from God. We are living in dark times. Well, literally, thanks to Esco. Sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, we are living in the midst of a world at war, moreover, a spiritual war. And the world we live in is dysfunctional, it is angry, and it is evil. Our assignment in this day and age is to magnify God to the maximum so that the lost can be found. We are called to root out and to pull down those strongholds, those chains that are binding us, those old traditions that have nothing to do with worshipping, praising and glorifying God. Those customs and those wrong beliefs and wrong thinking that have kept us away from God. We are called to destroy them and to throw them down. We are called to build and to plant anew all for the glory and honour and praise of God so that we may live with him in eternity one day soon. For those of us who, like Jeremiah, we use our age, I'm too young, now I'm too old, or I can't speak in front of people, I can't pray in front of people, I can't work in the Lord's vineyard because I can't preach. God is saying to us this morning, don't you say things like that, Oshala. Don't say that. Because before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. In other words, I set you apart. I blessed you. I ordained you. In other words, God says, I had an intention. I have a des I've designed you and I've predestined you 
for my purpose. Yes, you are going to come up against all sorts of people who are lost and desperate and stubborn and rebellious. Just go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, that is what you speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Do you know what the word deliver means? That word means to draw out, to snatch away, to rescue you. That is why God is with you. He deliberately goes you, goes with you to give you the assurance that he will rescue you because there is no evil that will prevail against you. May God bless you so richly as you take up your assignment and as you walk in your purpose. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you that there is nothing in heaven or earth of which to be afraid. Thank you that you are with us and have promised to deliver us from all forms of evil and to protect us and those we love from all that would do us harm, just as you did with Jeremiah and other men of God who trusted your name. Thank you for the witness of people like Jeremiah, whom you equipped as a mighty man of God, yet was attacked on all sides. Thank you that your promises to him stood fast throughout his lifetime, just as they do for your people today. Thank you that you are our defense and you are our deliverer, time and right in, but me right into eternity this of my lord jesus christ i pray in your name amen Ik vertel, dus niet makkelijk.